Hey there everyone, this is Dan from the Strength Coach Tutor. Hope you guys are all doing well. Thanks for checking out today's video. So what we are going to discuss today are the five steps or phases to a muscle contraction. Those five phases are gonna be the first resting phase, second the excitation contraction coupling phase, third being the power stroke, four is the recharge phase, and then five is going to be the relaxation phase, okay? So let's first talk about the resting phase. So resting phase, Let's use the example where we're going to be doing a bicep curl. All right. So the resting phase, you know, let's just say I'm holding the weights, but they're down by my sides. Um, the dumbbells are down by my hips and legs, and I haven't started to contract my biceps yet, right? There's no joint movement going on whatsoever. I'm not contracting my muscles uh, to any degree. So what's actually happening here um, is that there's very little calcium present within the muscle, and we're going to talk about that. The calcium is still going to be stored within the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and there's very little, if any, cross bridging between actin and myosin, okay? So that's all within that first phase, the resting phase. Once we get a nerve impulse, right, to tell the muscle, hey, let's contract, we're gonna create some force here, we're gonna get into that excitation contraction coupling phase. So what happens is that when that muscle receives that nerve stimulus, right, what ends up happening first is that calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, all right? Calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and that calcium goes to two places. It first goes to troponin, it then goes to tropomyosin. Troponin and tropomyosin, those are both components or parts, if you will, of an actin filament. So you can think of all of this calcium bonding on to tropin, troponin and tropomyosin, which are parts of actin. So in essence, this calcium is binding onto actin, okay? And so it just happens to be, just the way our bodies are designed, that these myosin heads have a very high affinity or very high attraction to calcium. And where did that calcium just go? It just went to actin, right? It just went to troponin and tropomyosin. So naturally now, those myosin heads are gonna latch onto troponin and tropomyosin, right? They're gonna get that coupling. If you can picture when two uh, train cars connect, they create this coupling together. So that way when one pulls, it takes the other along with it, all right? So that's what's going on there. Those myosin heads are gonna latch on and couple. So that way, eventually when we get to this next phase here, when they want those myosin heads flex or pull, it's gonna pull actin along with it. And we can eventually create some force here, a constant muscle contraction, if you will. Getting a little bit ahead of myself there. So but with the excitation, excitation, contraction, coupling phase, excuse me, calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And that calcium goes to troponin and tropomyosin, which are parts of actin. And those myosin heads have a very high affinity for actin. So therefore, those myosin heads couple and latch onto actin or, in essence, troponin and tropomyosin. All right? That is the excitation contraction coupling phase. That's step number two. Step number three is going to be the power stroke. So the power stroke is when those myosin heads flex or pull on that actin filament once we've uh, released, uh, or I should say broken down, ATP. Right? So ATP has to go through hydrolysis, right? And when it does that, we end up getting that release of energy. And so when that happens, those myosin heads flex and pull on actin, so that way we get our concentric muscle contraction. All right, so the contraction phase, um, and what's known as the power stroke, that is going to be our concentric muscle contraction, okay? Now, this fourth phase is the recharge phase. I like to think of this as the eccentric muscle contraction. Um, so basically, everything kind of, resets, if you will. Calcium is still present. There's obviously still uh, binding between actin and myosin, but those myosin heads are going to relax, if you will, and they're going to go back to that starting position, okay? And so in reality, right, if we're doing several repetitions, right, let's just say we do 10 repetitions, we're going back and forth between that contraction phase and recharge phase, contraction phase, recharge phase, contraction phase, recharge phase, until we finish our set, okay? So once we finished our set, so to speak, our set of bicep curls in this example, we are then going to go into the relaxation phase. This is where calcium is shuttled back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, self, uh, so calcium floating, if you will, throughout the muscle is going to be uh, significantly decreased. And those myosin heads are going to detach themselves from actin, detach themselves from actin, I'm sorry, uh, from troponin and tropomyosin, right? Because there's no attraction there left for those myosin heads, right? Calcium's gone, so myosin heads are gonna let go. Um, and so that's it, that's gonna be our muscle contraction where, again, with our five phases, we started off with the resting phase, 
Then we went to excitation contraction coupling phase. Then the contraction phase, which is, in, includes our power stroke, which is that concentric muscle contraction. After that, we have a recharge phase, which is like our eccentric muscle contraction. And then lastly, once we finish our set, we're going to go into our relaxation phase where calcium goes back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. All right, guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope those five steps of a muscle contraction um, make a little bit more sense to you. Hopefully it uh, clears up any uncertainty you may have. If you guys need more help or you need more practice questions on these topics, please go to thestrengthcoachtutor.com and join our online classroom or book tutoring sessions one-on-one -on -one with me. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. And I'm looking forward to working with you. See you later.